I recently planted a stump in my workshop to mount an anvil on. I've had this anvil kicking around for, I don't know, about five or six years. It was a gift to me from one of my aunties, whose husband, who is not a relation of mine, his grandfather had a blacksmithing workshop and he forged this anvil himself. So it's kind of special in that regard, though it's not really like my great grandfather's. It's more like my great grandfather's best friend's tennis partner's anvil. It's a nice old anvil. And I'm really looking forward to not kicking my toe on this thing every time I walk past it. And in case you haven't guessed already, these pieces of wood are guides for the chainsaw bar. I'm going to chop about four inches off the top of this thing to get the anvil to a good working height for me. It's a rock well. Um, yeah, it's kind of... It's a little chainsaw that could, let's just call it that. I think this thing cost me $150 when I got it. It's just a cheap Chinese chainsaw. And... Uh, it just refuses to die, so um, hopefully today isn't the day. Well, that was a lot harder than what it needed to be. I think I'll stick to metalworking. I regret doing that. Second I did it, I'm like, that was a dumb idea. That is good. That's taken all of the, uh, the, the tinginess out of it. That's a nice quiet anvil now. This is obviously a motor off an old industrial fan. What I like about this motor is it has a built-in speed adjuster. 
and a really easy way of mounting it. We've got these nice four bolt holes in the front. So we're threaded for M6 by the looks of that. I plan on coupling that with this. This is a leaf blower attachment off a, uh, one of those Aldi branded whippersnippers. I actually pondered for quite some time how I was going to join these two things together. In the end, I decided to 3D print some parts. One, it would free up time for me to work on other things. And two, it's actually a really cheap and efficient way of manufacturing one-off parts. According to the slicer program that I was using, um, I think the coupler cost $2 in plastic to make, so it's really hard to beat. Feeling confident that my two pet robots could undertake this task, I was able to focus my attention on the stand for the motor. Unfortunately, my attention was so fixed on the motor stand that I completely forgot to turn the microphone on, so sorry about that. Just pointing out something for you budding tick welders out there. When you get to the end of a run, don't pull away so quickly. Pause and let the gas do its job in shielding the weld as it cools off.
When completed, this blower is going to be supercharging a wood-powered forge slash furnace. Some of you may be um, sitting there going, hey Steve, like, couldn't you make the rocket stove furnace work in such a way that it wouldn't actually need a, an electric motor? Like, couldn't we just design the stove in such a way, furnace, that uh, it could passively power itself? And yes, yes we could do that, but it would be a pain in the butt to use. You'd be constantly having to remove the riser in order to feed it more aluminium to smelt. I have seen guys do it and I can, uh, and it, it is totally doable, but the stove becomes massive at that point. In order to have enough draw uh, to be able to pull enough air through, uh, you end up, you require a very large insulated riser. And basically I was like, I don't know if I have that much room to spare actually down there. So I'm like, well, you know, yes, I could do that. Or I could jimmy rig this electric motor up to it and still have a wood powered uh, furnace and forge, but yeah, just needs an electric motor. And I was like, you know what? This motor runs really quite, you know, it's quite pleasant to be around. It's, um, it's, it's not like a hairdryer motor or like a blower motor that are just irritatingly noisy. I thought, you know what? Yeah, I'm just gonna build an electric motor. The chicken over there is stuffing itself with grain and it's just really distracting me. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear that. Yeah, so the conclusion I came to was, uh, in order to save size, in order to just make it pleasant to use, I would just make that little compromise and would add an electric motor. Um, yeah, hopefully this will be a multi-fuel stove. It'll be able to run on butane, LPG, um, you know, barbecue heat, bricks, coal, wood. Um, my intention is to make something that's uh, sort of the do-it-all machine. So we'll see how that goes. I've, I've got a few ideas um, and we'll get to it. This rather large and ugly bit of stainless steel tube is 250 millimeters in diameter. It's not exactly the straightest cut on the end of it, so I'm using an old grinding belt as a, a wraparound straight edge. It's not the right tool, but it's better than nothing. The overall length of the pipe is 480 millimeters long and as you can see here I'm notching in the fire tube a little bit high so there's room for insulation at the bottom. Spirit fingers. I'm going to be using 6mm stainless steel rod to hold the fuel directly under the hopper so it doesn't just all blow away. It'll all make sense in a minute. Did I just put a 6mm end mill in the drill truck? Yes. Yes I did. And I should have known better. Mm. 
on the last hole too. Man, that steel's dead. Don't adjust your screen. All those little things flying around are bugs going straight into the arc. The smell is wonderful. So what you just saw me weld along the front here is called lay wire technique and basically you just set the machine a lot hotter than what it needs to be. I'm using 2.4 mil filler wire, this is like some 316L, that's really irrelevant for this application. And um, basically all I was doing was applying a forward pressure with the filler rod and downward pressure if that makes sense. So forward and down. Uh, that keeps the filler rod firmly in the groove and I just sort of melt over top of that. And this this really is a, it's just a fast way of TIG welding. It's like, as I jokingly sort of said before, this is how you TIG like a MIG. If you can hit your weld with a stainless steel wire brush while it's still hot, um, it basically does 90% of the cleanup work for you. For whatever reason, those oxides just come straight off and you're left with a really nice clean weld. Of course, if you're using a stainless steel wire brush, make sure that you've only ever used stainless steel on it. If I was to use this on mild steel and then use it to clean this, um, I would contaminate this and the stainless steel would begin to get surface rust on it. So yeah, um, I only use this style of brush for stainless steel, that's how I know I'm safe. It's always worth doing a dry run just to make sure you have a full range of movement. In this case, the weight of the lead is just causing a little bit of issue there. That is the power of pulse right there. That is why I love pulse. It is like your superpower when it comes to stainless steel. In the other welds that I did were okay, and uh, but th but that. Well, there's really no comparison. That's a, it's a huge reason why a machine just like this one is so invaluable. Uh, the pulse functions that you get allow you to get these sort of results. And you can do a great job with straight DC, but once you dial in pulse, I mean, look at that color. It, it's really, um, it's cheating.
so there's a little bit going on here obviously this is where we're going to be melting stuff and this is going to be the, the hopper now I've got to put a really good lid on this thing because if I don't um, it's just not going to work uh, this will end up becoming the main riser the fuel will catch fire here and it's just you know the air is going to want to travel in the path of least resistance and it's going to be straight back up here that's not what we want which is why this is going to be uh, fan forced uh, so it's going to be blowing through the, the prison bars I don't know what else to call them across there that's going to keep the fuel where I want it not sort of falling out this way not blowing that way and because it's going to be fan forced I'm fairly certain we're going to get pretty much perfect combustion whatever soot or ash builds up is hopefully going to just end up getting blown into the uh, into the actual furnace that's pretty much it we are 80% uh, of the way there ah good day everyone 60,000 subs how good is that thank you for your support over the years um, my wife and I and family really appreciate it it's been a fun ride and um, and I look forward to the next milestone being a hundred thousand subscribers so thank you um, and to celebrate the milestone our captain is giving away a welder so if you want to enter into that competition um, I, all you need to do is leave a comment and like and subscribe you'll be in the running you need to be in Europe America or Australia to enter the competition and if you want to enter twice who wouldn't uh, check out their Facebook page they'll be running a separate giveaway on our captain's Facebook site page I'm not very technical <laughs> so thank you our captain for sponsoring this video and giving away a welder I really appreciate it and I really like your welder it's been um, it's actually I was nervous at first uh, but it's really proving to be a, a very good good quality machine part two sorry guys I've got to break this up into two videos basically there's a fair bit that's going on I'm a little bit further down the track than you guys are and it's there's a few learning curves it's going to take a little while for me to work out how to get this thing running but I do get it running in the end so uh, yeah stay tuned for that uh, apart from that I think that's everything thank you for watching I'll see you in the next one